here. Nathan Kiso. He is excused. The guy in Tawani. Don't know. Might be on his way. David Rashka. Same as Sagar Talani. Vince Vitale. Yeah. Alderman Kevin Haas. Excused. Myself here. Jason Kazmarek. Here. Dave Webking. Here. Rob Hunter. Rob is excused as well. And Patrick. Here. We have six committee members present, which is a quorum. All right. Then let's move into item C. And item one would be our 2022 progress. And I will turn it over to staff. Okay. I think we'll start with if there's anything on the infrastructure, the streets projects or anything of note. We just looked it over and the ones that have un, in the unknown column, uh, like Scott Street, those were moved out of the 2022 okay. and into 2023. So we're, we're looking at the recap of 2022. Right. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much covers page one. And then page two. Dave, I don't know if you can give us some updates on this. So uh, some of these were um, addressing at this time the muni lot fencing, uh, receiving estimates regarding that, and that was for $60,000. Honey Creek substation roof, substation there, we're um, getting estimates, but we elected to do that in-house, so that roof repair or replacement will be done by our staff. HVAC software, again, getting quotes. Uh, Jefferson School and Liberty Heights substations there. We're trying to address the numerous transformers that are in these uh, substations. So basically, before they start leaking and cause an environmental hazard, we're trying to remove those. Uh, with fire admin, uh, it's, we're currently doing wallpaper renovation there. That's uh, currently being half done, I believe. And two and three is on hold. Uh, we st started looking at duct pointing uh, for the facility at the health department. This was a carryover in 2021. So that's one that we'll have to ask for engineering's help as well uh, to get the uh, specs for that to go for the RFP. Library, skipping all the way down to the library there for 230,000, that's on hold. These are the many skylights. When you go through the atrium, you'll see that and they show signs of where uh, the facility, I believe, was constructed in 1989, 88. So it's a uh, good many years that they've been exposed to sunlight. Uh, parks, Liberty Heights Park, uh, we do have a boiler issue that is non-functional. So if the city wants to have winter activities, that will have to be replaced. Otherwise, I know development, Patrick's been working on a design team uh, for potentially a, a new facility there. So we'll have to evaluate if we wanna keep on putting uh, funding into that old facility. Uh, Public Works Boulevard landscaping bed consolidations, uh, that will start up in August uh, this month, excuse me. Tree replacements are finished for the Emerald Ash Bore. Uh, the reservoir roof, we did receive quotes and that should be within a month or two that uh, contractor will be handling that as well as the grant pump station roof we received the necessary quotes for that and we'll be outsourcing that lastly is a lot of the equipment uh, we're seeing uh, when we're getting uh, quotes that these will not be available until 2023 late or 2024 the pricing for these is going to be potentially increase to such that they change month to month. So we'll try to do our best and we'll consolidate and we'll kind of prioritize that equipment so we're under budget, we'll manage it that way, but we're trying to get uh, the RFPs out, uh, going through source well and purchasing and finance uh, so we can get on the books and we can get a price that's, you know, confirmed at this time, so. 
Patrick, did you have anything on the development section on page two? Um, one thing to note, I think you're working on a GoFundMe site, Alderman Road for the cemetery, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, so there's 5000 that was from a carryover funds to help with that that project, and I think you're working on getting additional funding. Right, I think okay. there's about 1400 into it right now. Right. And then um, I think the 15000 for bike shares was incorporated into another one of our city projects already through engineering. Tracy, is that correct? I'm not aware of that. Okay. I got to follow up on that. Other than that, most of the other projects we're still working on. So. Okay. Thank you. The last item on page two, the council audio solution that was um, put in place, I believe, last month. There's one piece that we still need. I think it, ha it helps with... Um, a Wi-Fi enabling so someone can hook up through their phone their um, hearing aid so supply chain issues for that um, then on the last page the ambulance they usually buy those in threes and so they would buy this and order this with the two that they're asking to fund in the next year so it would be in December so that's still outstanding I'm not sure about the body armor. Um, the pickup truck, I know they they just got approval to purchase a, an electric pickup truck. Um, for the police, they're holding off on the Elfers systems. I believe they already purchased the squads. Um, instead of buying a 19th or 20th century um, technology, we had everything scanned in, so we did not buy a microfilm machine. Um, the generator is that for <coughs> for the police department uh, that would be late 2024 I believe okay August 2024 okay. thank you and then um, the department hardware upgrade camera server and camera replacement maintenance they just ask I believe at the last council meeting to do that and then they also have a request in for their 2023 budget to expand on that a little more. Um, our virtual city hall software, we're up and running with OpenGov. Um, I believe it was less than 200,000. I think it was like 100. 120. Yeah. So that's the updates from what's going on now. And we could go into item two, the next year to 27 program. Yep. Jason, how did you want to handle this? Um, well, I, I provided, um, I think most of you, this, this summary a few days ahead of time. I didn't know if you want to go maybe section by section then and see if anyone has any questions on these on these items so if we if we want to start um, just looking at that first of all we're looking at a little bit of different packet this year um, so the the first two-page report on here is simply a 2023 uh, two-page listing of hopefully you guys can wrap your head around it this is what was proposed and then the report that follows is a three-page, little more, little more detail of how might we be funding this stuff. Some of that is still to be finalized. And then the third report in here is kind of the longer-term plan that uh, we're looking forward to. And then lastly, just the backup that was provided for some of the items on the 2023 CIP program. So we just want to start with um, the proposed projects list. The first category is streets. Uh, I know uh, Pete provided this list. Any questions on the streets that are, are being or proposed to be reconstructed for 23? Or we'll say the streets uh, or the alleys 
or the ro um, or the sidewalk program. It's just an annual program. Does anyone have any <coughs> questions with those? I had a question about the sidewalk program. Is that larger amount than we used to fund? I thought it was like ten thousand dollars that we used to do. Maybe I'm mistaken. But. Sure. It um, seems about right. I know that ten thousand when we do. Um, the pavement patching, like usually the ten thousand amount is in the utilities, like for like okay. adjustments. So maybe that's the number you're thinking of. Okay. But I thought it was around that. I don't know. I thought it was around that also. Thank you. Were any of the streets available for the infrastructure bill funding, or is that the third, um, the columns oh, on, I'm on the, the top? Wrong one. That's why. I'm reading the main. Oh yeah. That'll just give you the high level. Gotcha. The I was going high level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So the different um, tab it has suggested funding. Gotcha. Thank you. And that's consistent with the guidance we received early on with from the council to focus on you know the water and yeah. street infrastructure. I'm not aware of there being any projects on here that are specifically for the infrastructure bill. And if that's incorrect, then please let me know. No, nope, that is you, correct. Or maybe this is something else. I thought you were paying all the utilities using the, the, ARPA. the ARPA funds. With, with ARPA. So, and we're just kind of, yeah, we're keeping those, those two things separate. But then the, after ARPA came this giant infrastructure. infrastructure. infrastructure bill. Okay. That's what I yep. kept mailing Pete so much he retired. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't fund anything. <laughs> yeah. it, they just kept, no, they just kept, the National League of Cities and some of those groups kept sending yeah. emails and webinars and, you know, I don't know how to call it propaganda, but just yeah. strong encouragement to use all the funding and even the whole, that whole conference I went to in Washington, D.C. was all about the infrastructure bill and, and it was very hard for cities our size to capitalize on it because we're considered part of the Metro Milwaukee area. There's there was some weird verbiage. It was also difficult because of the time frame this year. Yeah. Um, all the projects had to go through the State Department of Transportation, and the timeline for that was just too quick from yeah. when we found out about the bill funding to when we would have had to have plans. We would have already had to have something started to get that funding. Any other questions on the street related items? I don't have anything. What? Yes, I think one of our committee members usually asks the question how much did we spend last year for borrowing for streets? And then there's usually like this capital or, or we increase it based on our percentage for the resolution. No, I thought. Usually stays the same. Stays the same. But, Jason, you're but with the ARPA money, does that change? Like we're not borrowing. We're not borrowing. So the the utility portion would be separate. We have a an ordinance that says we can't borrow more than three point seven five million. That's what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that it, there's no annual inflator on that, but we keep the streets uh, debt borrowing under that threshold we have increased it within the last so many years so that's 27 yes that's five. what I remember okay. mm -hmm. it looks like it gets updated maybe every five years or okay. so that gets increased depending on need I mean it reached four million yet no yet not, not yet, yet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so development is the next section. I know we, um, Patrick, I'm assuming you're the one that, that uh, put the string lights uh, project on there. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. It's in a different Yeah, it's in a different area. area. <laughs> okay. Yes. The, um, the oh, picture string lights, we are hoping to reconvene a meeting with engineering to review that project that coincides with the city's lighting improvement project. 
to see if we can find some synergy to reduce the project cost. However, the project cost with the poles and the lighting, we put it 140,000 in here of block grant dollars uh, for next year if this project is going to go forward. So that at least we have it in the CIP program. <coughs> Rift replacement is an annual thing that our contractor will minister over at Beloit Road to get roofs replaced. And then the, the branded bus shelter is something that would need funding. Um, those, are the, those are the three. I, d I was kind of wondering why we have the Beloit Road roof in our capital fund. We're still part owner in it. I mean, if you don't want it in there, we can I'm just wondering, are we... Are we paying for it? Out it of comes out capital? of the uh, the budget of the Floyd Road. I, I threw. If you look at the the funding detail, that's got its own column over there for mm -hmm. private pay. I mean, we. It, it's up to you guys if you'd want to keep it on there. It's pretty okay. much for reference only. It's not city money that's being spent on that. It's just by having it on here, we're seeing that it's being accomplished. I don't know. I can take it off. There's no accounting. Okay. No. I mean. Well, we we do, do we do do the books annually, so. But as far as the city books, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's a separate fund. Yep. Well, that's a separate L. That's a private company handling that. That's not right. even on our books. We have a um, Beloit Road fund. But that this activity isn't something that would go through that. Okay. We can remove it. Okay. I'm just trying to get this down to one page. Fully <laughs> <laughs> understood. Come on. It's a start. <coughs> You know, there's a, there's a little park on uh, Beloit and uh, Grant, you know. I mean, it's been there for many years. And, and really, uh, a few years ago, a few accidents did occur. A young girl got killed. And uh, sometimes I wonder if we can just close it off and uh, create more of a call and sac uh, Well, there's a good, that's a good segue into yeah. what... The Beloit. So the parks and recreation, do you want yeah. me to do that section? I think yes. there was one more thing under yeah. the development, right? We're, well, we're, well, that we're was all the bus on two shelter. different pages here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where. In the bus shelter. If I follow the front page under 2023 under development, there's three. Okay, let's do that. And then if I go to the next session, it's parks and recreation. Okay, let's finish the. The last thing under development was the bus shelter on 92nd National Avenue, and I don't have any update other than idea here is to replicate um, another bus shelter over on 70th and Greenfield like we did on 92nd in National. But it won't be red. It will it be red. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever color we would like it, we can facilitate that. This one's going to be green. The Parks and Recreation, I think some of this is engineering as well as maybe DPW submitting things, but um, the Blight Road Pocket Park is what Alderman Vitale was just referring to, is the closure of Grant Street and creating a cul-de-sac, I believe, or, you know, or just closing just a piece closing of land. Just closing one section of Grant um, because there's too many intersections in that area. And then to create a little neighborhood park, and I think there's some discussion with the Rotary. That yeah, I think it does. That would be a great idea as well. I mean, it's because years ago I used to live there, that's why I... The, ne the I next mean, question? Yeah. Yeah, is, is, um, I don't know who's in charge here. That's why I didn't say Mayor Divine or... This is a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, all all right. in my road. Um, oh, is this the Christmas tree lot you're talking about? No. No. That's a private lot. The Christmas tree lot is a private lot across the street. Okay, where's There's this There's already park? a little... Uh, it's a green space that used to be a gas station <clears> or... Uh, car wash. So, so is right now, is that in south side of Beloit? Already, south side of Beloit. Oh, that's just a tiny little triangle. Is yes, a park and we're making oh, the okay. triangle a little bit bigger 
and that's what we're calling a pocket park. Okay, thank you. Right now, there's just a bench, a couple trees, and some plantings. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I was close. The next couple are, are kind of ongoing projects in long range thinking with the farmer's market. There's a power grade up needed to fix the lighting and provide more power to the farmer's market. And I, I know we would like to hire a consultant to help develop that plan of upgrading the farmer's market power. Um, that relates to how then how we use the farmer's market and, and so the way we use it currently with vendors, et cetera, and sometimes music, there's supposedly not enough power at the facility where they're flipping circuits and, and, and issues like that. So we're working right now on improving lighting. We need to upgrade the, the power system. And then there's some comments that have come back about getting more utilization, more public space associated with the farmers, such as a stage and maybe a children's play area at the farmer's market, which might be great to get more use out of that piece of land. Um, and then we have an agreement with the sewage district to help provide um, maybe some additional funding to the farmer's market and improve the area where the trees are on the west end to do some stormwater collection um, in those areas. So that's, that's um, the third farmer's market item that you see on the list. I think Dave has the next item. Is there any potential for solar at the market? I know we talked about it years ago, but focus on energy or... We just have to explore it. I think that would be a great thing. Because it's always been branded as the green market with the rain barrels and everything. If we could have, even if it's just like, not the main lighting source, but even some under the eaves, accent lighting or something like that. It seems like those roofs would be ripe for solar panels. The historical <laughs> facility lighting, that's so that was our uh, consultant in 2019 so we wanted to upgrade the lighting within the historical society <coughs> to LED uh, for cost saving measures uh, skipping to the garbage recycling containers rodent proof containers so we're looking at those type of containers that we just uh, assisted communications at the farmers market and replacing all those at Liberty Heights, given the, the road <coughs> issues that we've had at that uh, location or near that location. Uh, lighting, this is concerning the ball field. Uh, we're actually robbing <laughs> uh, from another ballpark that the city owns, and we just, again, trying to make do with the old type of halogen lighting. So. Uh, if we are going to have that type of ball diamond, uh, we're going to have to upgrade and uh, improve it to LED lighting. Uh, just it's problematic and it's not uh, working at its best. Uh, many times that uh, there's one or two lights that are usually out for those type of teams uh, or patrons using that type of uh, field. And then lastly is the Reservoir Park, the shelter there. We're looking at the, for the material costs to replace the roof on that shelter. Uh, this will be done internally, but also uh, replacing the, the pool shed, the storage area inside the pool area, that roof as well with the monies here. Again, that's contingent on the direction that the city wants to take. within the park so if there's any major changes but. and then we have a couple other public improvement projects in this area that such as the, the inclusive park project which today we did get a few, some possible locations thoughts from our consultant and a possible design uh, so we have some more follow-up information to provide for that um, the item here is something that has come up is uh, uh, a bike repair stand near the Hast Hank Aaron State tra uh, Trail. Um, I actually was like, looking at one of those this last weekend in West Bend along a bike trail where they have an air pump, different tools. It's a stand and it's concrete slab where people then can put their bike and work on it. It'd be a nice feature to put people, you know, bring people to West Allison. We can even put a public kiosk next to it about different things going on in the city. Um, 
think that's all the items I have on in that section. And the Liberty Heights Pavilion replacement. That's the next item that we'll have for a design meeting and neighborhood meeting soon. I can't find the picture now, and I don't know what park it was related to, but there was one about that showed like suggested like garbage cans and stuff. I just want to make sure that we're getting the rat proof, the rodent proof ones. Not the ones Oops. that look like post office um, things like the farmer's market. <laughs> okay, that's what they were uh, Is that specking. What they all yeah. Are? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can get something know. different. I, I don't know. I just had some comments from people that look, they look like yeah. big mailboxes. But if they're working, I guess no bears can get in them either. <laughs> bears have made it the way to Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> it's not uh, Dave, Dave, I have a. I mean, as long as we talk about uh, Liberty Heights, uh, I know we've been talking about, uh, of course, uh, improve the uh, pavilion, you know, I mean, uh, get it to be where it should be. So, so you mentioned about the uh, boiler. It's bad shape. I mean, so we're talking about 17 sometimes. Yeah, right? it's non operational right now, so I it see. does not work. Um, we attempted, uh, we put some money into it, and even the repair person pretty much said <laughs> uh, for the amount of money to repair it, it's not worth, can't oh. justify it. So I guess that's something that we would have to clarify in the future what direction we want to go. Uh, you know, usually, if you put that amount of money, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. You would hopefully be at that location to make. The uh, the questions that I have is, uh, how much really in the winter time uh, the uh, pavilion gets utilized? You know, so so if, if it's something, the amount of time is very minimum. Well, probably can relocate the event maybe someplace else. You know, for uh, for a short time until. We so build the new pavilion, you know, which but is good. It's getting more yeah, use. Um, the there's skating, uh, ice skating, and that's kind one thing that we yeah. want to encourage. So, even though there's no, you know, heat, it still uh, provides a kind of like a windbreak, you know, yeah. uh, for those individuals. We just wouldn't have the water. Everything would be shut off, obviously, for obvious Yeah, reasons, I mean, I understand that. You know, they can still use the facility, but not the restrooms and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So, but we want to encourage, yep, the use of it. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Anything else? Then, Dave, do you want to just go on off the first report? Sorry, they're they're kind of sorted differently. I'll work on that the next go around, but. If you want to start going over some of the public works items okay. then, uh, like <coughs> I know you mentioned the landscape bed for this year, but you yeah. have So for next year, you see the locations there, Greenfield Avenue, Oklahoma, National. Uh, those bed locations will be consolidated. And at the entry point of that uh, boulevard, that will have one larger um, for more efficiency, easier to uh, take care of. We have a bucket attachment for our brand new excavator. The uh, the bucket that came with it didn't have a grabbing capability. So if we're replacing a sanitary storm sewer, we're using a bucket. This has a kind of a grabber type mechanism. It's just more efficient, uh, more safer as well. <coughs> uh, DPW facility, hybrid F-150 pickup trucks. These are uh, vehicles that were uh, submitted for grant funding uh, that were hybrid so again thank you to Tracy who helped us write those grants uh, for these type of vehicles 80% of the funding is going to be covered by the grant if we are approved so fingers crossed on that um, are they full when you say hybrid they're part electric and part gas correct okay yep. is it a plug-in hybrid or no it, it's, it's just, just battery just a, yeah. okay so, so Dave, just to pause there for a second. Okay. I think the funding was noted as um, in, in, this is part of the infrastructure bill that the DOT is doing. Is that mm -hmm. correct? The funding, correct. Yeah, the Wisconsin DOT from the federal government. So, whereas we didn't get anything for streets yet at this <coughs> point, we did get some funding for equipment. It has not been approved yet. We applied for that funding. 
Um, this year, the 2022 funds, it didn't Arr. work out. Um, there's no mechanism for the state to give the city the funding for it. So they're going to take the money from 2022, put it in 2023. I'll have to resubmit those applications again. Um, and they'll, they'll try again next year. So the federal government had the funds, but they legally couldn't give it to the state of Wisconsin, Wisconsin DOT, and allocate those funds. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, building its roof maintenance, that for $15,000, why don't we just cross that out? That's something that can be covered. Jenka? Yeah. Uh, the parking lot, I believe, is engineering. Parking signs, uh, that is, we are currently <laughs> finishing. We have approximately 1,100 signs, either temporary or to put in uh, uh, stakes throughout the city in those designated areas that we are highlighted or kind of instructed by the engineering department. And that's every year. So it takes approximately two weeks, but also takes staffing away from other responsibilities. And that's the most important. It takes two weeks to set up and two weeks to Two weeks to, to, to tear down. down. Good point. Right. So we're looking at lease because material costs are rising uh, for about 1,100 sign plates, posts, and so on and so forth. It's going to be easily around $200,000. And that's something if we go forward, we'll have to work with engineering regarding the placement, but also, you know, have a resolution and have citizen feedback as well. That they'll have these signs, you know, within their front yards. So just to point out on that one too, I, I don't know what the exact funding source is going to be for that, but I was, um, had asked Rebecca to consider uh, using tourism, uh, room taxes to cover that particular project that might work well for that that's a good idea mm -hmm. are these signs you're thinking permanent signs right. yeah. <coughs> yeah. Be, yeah. and these would be separate from the normal like two-hour parking only and some of them I, I guess we could potentially double up you know on these that's kind of what I was yeah. thinking is like I mean if, if you're gonna leave it up year-round yeah if you've ever looked in Milwaukee, they have, you know, of course it's the, the snow designation underneath, but it's one sign that says to our parking and then like the bottom two lines in red, it says, you know, except from December 1 to March, March 1. 1. <coughs> it includes March 1. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so maybe just if we're, if those signs already exist, maybe just replacing that and adding that at the bottom. If only we could get the state fair to be on the same dates every year. <laughs> <laughs> we were just going to play state, state fair. Well, it's, right. It's, <laughs> right. it's always from first Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, first Thursday, and it's second exactly Sunday. 11 dates. So it's like third to the 13th, second to the 12th. Yeah, so mm -hmm. fourth to the 14th. Yeah. This year, yeah. yeah. That's a good but idea. I think we put up more signs than what's there currently, right? So you'd have to put up more permanent signs. More permits. Not an attachment to the existing ones. Yeah. Yes. Regular. But the ones that posts. already are near the. Uh, those yeah. Just replacing replace those signs. Or you couldn't put up enough signs, the way some people. Right. He would know. Oh, I know. I see it. I see <laughs> the tow truck every weekend. Yeah. I'd feel sorry for the people, but. But even uh, I think Rebecca and I were just you know touring and kind of telling Rebecca that we usually have to have one or two seasonals that have to drive the route yeah. around State Fair because people either remove the ones that are on the trees mm -hmm. secured or on a you know temporary post so they remove them or they tip them over so that's just more ongoing time that's allocated for that. It's a lot of man hours. This would paper itself in a couple of years. Yeah. But like Dave said, some people might have a problem having a sign in their lawn. I guess yeah. it's not really their lawn, but in front of their sure. house. The once you cross the sidewalk, that's city property. Right? Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. We yep. get plenty of we complaints. Have a tree. 
<laughs> we have a tree on that portion, so something happens. Yeah, we've been adjusting light poles, and we get calls all the time that they don't want the light pole in their terrace. Some people don't want around going state past fair. Yeah, everywhere. Oh, okay. Uh, scissors lift. That's uh, another uh, grant application for electric scissors lift. Uh, sidewalk tractor. We have <coughs> some very old uh, snow removal type sidewalk uh, devices. Where do we get the parts when they're down or they break? Germany. So the supply chain is always an issue, but even more so now. Uh, we've had a holder that's been out for several months just waiting for parts for that. So again, they're due to be replaced. These are um, an item that you can have several attachments. You could grind sidewalks, you could plow, you could have a leaf attachment where you're pushing leaves for yard waste, that sort of thing. So there's multi-use for these type of vehicles. Uh, they're kind of like a four-wheeler type mechanism. Is it the articulating one? Yep. Okay. The rear. Yep. So if I could demo one, I'll make sure I do. I can take it out to the farm. Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. Who wants to demo? Yeah. Um, street lighting circuits. Uh, again, that's a program by engineering. Um, everything's on course there for outsourcing, but also with the uh, EPW street light pole replacement. 70th Street, oh my goodness, steel posts, steel poles, not a good idea at the time, yes, salt, you know, residue that gets on there, it's just not a good look, uh, the poles are deteriorating such that the base of these poles are rusted, <coughs> so we're going to start have to take action. We kind of looked at, well, could we take them down and repaint them? Yes, you could probably do that, but you'll never solve the rusting, you know, issue so I think that's something that really needs to be taken in account so um, what what's the replacement like a decorative are the, aren't all well, the poles like on the same, National Avenue steel yeah that would be no, nice. National Avenue is aluminum aluminum well that's black or well, all black. keep it similar to the ones black aluminum made. And I know Greenfield Avenue has a DOT connecting highway project coming up. In seven years. In the yeah. yeah, in the late 2020s. So if we could live through till then. Yeah. But it's kind of a, I guess when the bases are starting to get coals, you know, they're rusting through. You know. So are these, yeah. I mean, is that something that funding somehow with fire would be able to, no, maintenance, right? Block grant can't be used for maintenance. Is it mostly the clamshell things at the bottom? We used TIF dollars back then. Yeah, for the clamp, but we then also just, where they're connected and start to rust through the I'm wondering where if we they can connect. just replace the clamshell part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but it's a good, good point though. It's a good thought. Uh, let me see. Street sweeper again. That's for grant funding. Eighty percent electric street sweeper. Uh, transfer station lighting. Trying to improve the lighting uh, within that area. That would be potentially. I didn't look at your funding source. Solid waste. Jason, on that one, if it is approved. Um, then a wheel loader replacement. The vehicle cameras I put in there because that's a, something that comes up a lot at our risk management committee meetings. Um, since people think the city has deep pockets, they get amnesia sometimes when they have accidents with us and um, try to put place the blame totally on the city. And so having um, video of the accidents would help us a lot. Um, I just picked an estimate of, I don't know how much it would actually cost, but we could start it smaller and then each year expand it. And we could look at the vehicles that are most often involved in or yeah. close type of things and start with those. Um, yeah. It would just help. 
Hi. No, this is uh, capital improvements. Oh, okay. Are you looking for? It was supposed to be something about the Beecher Street rezoning. Oh, that was tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, Council meeting. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> you wanna? Steve can talk to. You. I can talk to you right now if you want. <laughs> yeah. Save him a trip. I was also going to find out if we could kind of piggyback on <coughs> what the police are already doing and maybe add some more cameras through that because it has the cloud funding, because it has <coughs> all the um, search capabilities and they might be involved in investigating the accident. You know, it would just be a lot easier to have it all in one system. Could I ask another question? Can we piggyback also with um, our signal stuff? We just installed new detection cameras on Lincoln intersections, um, 71st, 76th, and 84th. I don't know about the police cameras, but- Are you talking about the flock ones? Or are you talking nope, about Nope, I'm talking about the traffic signals have okay. detection cameras. Okay. And I want to piggyback with um, the police department and see if we can get that footage in the same place as the police department. Because right now it's only being used as detection, but we have cameras there if anyone wants that information. I just can't store it in the traffic signal cabinet. So it would have to be coordinating with the police department cameras. Okay, so you're talking about the ones, okay. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that because I think okay. these are, a little these are the cameras they the body cam and oh. the squad cams but i understand what you're saying and okay that's probably a good conversation to have when we replace those okay for the police department was a roof replacement for the sally port portion of the police department so that has not been replaced since it was built 1998-99 I believe and then the Vets Park the police substation roof that's over 35 years old and it's a uh, two roofs that are on it so it has, has to be a, a tear off to be replaced and that is leaking at this time so So just a out loud thought. <clears throat> we talked about the pavilion at Liberty Heights potentially housing a desk writing substation type of component. I'm just wondering if we should be pouring more money into this one or if there's probably a question for the chief as well, but I know the substation doesn't get used as much as we might like to see other than like the concerts and the cleanups and that would have to be a question on yeah the broader what you call that the, the main area there if that's yeah. available or they also have a holding cell there i believe which mm -hmm. within, within we have to have a holding cell in the new pavilion at a park which may not be the coolest mix but well but at the same time uh, <coughs> it's yeah. close to the farmer's market but there's Lunch new the development market. going in in that area so I don't know if we need, you know, if uh, events were to happen close by or whatever, if we need to have a substation close by there. I don't know what the initial intention of that substation was, but. Well before, I think, maybe Vince was here. I was here. <laughs> Patrick might have been here, I but, was here. Yeah, I but was there was a lot of resent that, <laughs> resentment that the police department was put on 116th Street, far west end, when something in the middle would have been a lot more centrally located so I think they put that in to kind of um, appease, appease the appease. east side yeah <laughs> and, and that's what happened but now with you know the whether it's perception or reality the, the number of incidents that have been taking place at Liberty Heights Park there's been talk about possibly having a 
substation component or community service office, something like that in the new pavilion. Just to Mayor, I, I totally agree with you, really. I think it would be ideal to, uh, you know, once, like I said, we talk about uh, improve or reconstruct the uh, pavilion, I, I, I think it would be something that could be very workable. I mean, I don't see nothing wrong if the kids know there is a cell there to be locked. Well, maybe they think about it a little more. The cops are right there. They have a open face cell. I mean, you can see right into it. Seventeen <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stockade. Hundreds. Yeah, stockade. Yeah. Sure. Just, a, just a thought. I mean, if I just don't. Well, that's a good thought. I don't want to throw I, 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 good money after a thing really. that we may not use in five years or something like that or two years. We also said that it was an efficiency factor that the police officer could do the their police paperwork there and then. When somebody needs to be transferred instead of driving all the way to the other side, somebody else can do the transfer. Yeah. And then that officer who's patrolling there, you can get back out. Back out. <clears throat> and, yeah. and there was parking available for squads there as well. So yeah. that well, we would have to do a site plan analysis yeah. with the pavilion to accommodate some of those things. And it's, it's kind of a wide net to cast in the grand scheme of this. A lot of people would be involved in it, but it's just something like well, well the fact that is that's where the uh, problem occurs you know I mean uh, throughout the summer you know I mean and many times throughout the year really uh, so to me I think it would be a logical thing to to do it really I mean so, you know I, to me mayor it's a good thought really to Maybe digest that pretty well you know really. we also talked about putting it in storefronts like one on 60th and Burnham at one point yeah or we were gonna buy a house and put the um, Satellite station on the lower level and a domestic abuse shelter yeah. on the upper Transitional floor. Transitional housing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you have a substation that close by, is it really worth the, the monies to move it what would be six blocks over, essentially? Well, that's, I'm, that's why I'm asking is should we spend a hundred grand on a roof if, if we're going to end up moving that operation to another park when we redo that pavilion and, and have that? It wouldn't be a third one. It would be moving the second I, one. I understand, but I'm just saying, what is what is more cost effective? Is upkeep of this, or is essentially putting a whole new substation? So it would depend on the funding for the pavilion at the park, in addition to the yeah. Oh, you're trying to integrate it into a new pavilion? Yes. Okay. There, yeah. There's plans for a full new pavilion, possibly okay. with containing a community service piece for the PD within that. So we just got to think through that a little bit. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a it's a huge it's a it's lot a good of idea. pieces right now, and it's it's. But I, I feel like you got to just say it now and get it in the discussion mm -hmm. mix because. So what's going to happen with the substation? That's another question. Because yeah. if you keep it, you're going to have a substation with a leaky roof. Well, you could piece it into a band shell and keep the summer concert oh, series there shell. if you want to okay. just keep that arc in the bathroom. I mean. Don't know. You know, in fairness, there is no activity that really happens, you know, where the substation is. There's not that much going on there at all. Sure there is. That's because the substation is Sure there is. They're, they're, they're filling out their paperwork. They're there in the morning. They use the bathrooms there rather than going to the gas stations. Well, well they could do the same thing, but where they, the, all of them are road, that's outside. where the crime the crime I can't hear you. This, this blow he's talking about the he's talking about the, the park and the, the park like the, the, pavilion. the big green area it's like okay. we have memorial day we have right. the community cleanup and the, and the concerts maybe some cat events out there concerts sure. yeah i mean that's overall it's not the green space is not used very much L liberty is heights saying. is not the safest place on the east end so maybe more visibility that they know there's a, poli a substation a police station there to me make it more sense I mean, because they see the square car park outside when they do their paperwork, whatever they're doing. And to me, that's an answer because that's where the problem happens right now, today, tonight. You know, there's always some scavengers in that park, constant. There's always something happens. So we'll, we'll discuss it. I mean, we'll discuss it more. We'll discuss it. I mean, it's, it's, it's One of the things we're talking about it too is having it as a polling location. And I don't know if there's any regulations about police stations and polling I don't think oh. there are because there's a lot of like town <coughs> and village halls that have everything together but yeah. I just would want to check that out 
For what it's worth, my polling place is at a police station. I don't know. Oh. Ooh. Okay. That's good enough. You feel afraid when you go there. <laughs> feel intimidated. <laughs> are they standing got there in the, <laughs> Are they standing there in their SWAT uniforms watching people vote for? They have the MRAP part. Yeah. The, the other thing is just as we took, of course, the meal programs there from the rec department, and then you bring criminals to a place where you just potentially yeah and there's could be some conflict you might have to be on the other side of the building <laughs> i can see like that's park being a lot of you know a nice place to reserve maybe even for a wedding a party if you could put some type of kitchenette in there um, it's just the center is so open that <coughs> you know, condos there that way. <laughs> yeah. oh I don't know veterans part. Just kidding. <coughs> no, you're right, but I mean then that would be condos. that would be an investment too. But yeah, veterans condos. <clears throat> All right, I got us way off track. Um, I guess I'll go over the fire. Um, so the ambulance replacing that's what I mentioned before. They had in the 2022. They have one. These are the other two. So they would order them all together in December. Um, the other items they're listed as far as what uh, I guess the specialty washer I think that's closer to end or end of life and then the fire nozzles I think they said they're older than most of the people on the on the force if I guess that's what you call them like that. so um, they need to be replaced and then I believe each year or every other year, they replace one of their vehicles. Um, the dorm requests. Could they, I'm sorry, could they do alternative fuel for that sedan? I, I, I thought. I mean, they're doing it for the Chief pickup. was looking into all electric for that. Okay. Dave, were you having that conversation for with the chief? Fire. But all electric. I was, I was having one. I know oh, in our it with fuel the meeting, we had that. Okay. That he said, yeah, for the truck. Okay. In the, is that what you're? I thought maybe he was looking at for this sedan. I thought he was looking at all electric, but I, 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 I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, then there's requests for dorms at each of the fire stations. Um, so for, question. Mm-hmm. Well, for two point six million, could we just like buy them houses next to the fire station and <laughs> have a lot of money left over? Buy apartments. I mean, really, that's and even have a heated tunnel to the station from the house <laughs> for still less money. <laughs> Anything's possible. Buy, <laughs> <laughs> buy that garage next to uh, one. Is that one? Yeah. Yeah. Right next to one, there's the car garage. You can work by that yeah. and build a house there. I mean, the, the, the problem is that you have, with COVID, when you, one person, because they're in one big room, when one person got sick, then everyone had to isolate. And then also it mentions about the different genders that you have now. In the past, it was majority um, said to 2002 there was just male firefighters so mm -hmm. um, now we have different genders and then they also have a big problem with bed bugs there um, they've taken out the carpeting and everything like that but they kind of as makeshift dorms they have um, separators that are like from cubicles so they, they have fabric on so the they are always getting bed bugs on them. So um, that's it's not what because the they're dirty. It's just the houses they go into. Yeah. So we have to make sure their apartments didn't have a bed bugs. In them. Right. But yeah. So when they come back from the calls. Yeah. So that would mean each room gets their own bathroom too. I don't. I don't think it was. I didn't. I don't think it was that. But it's the problem is they have a station alerting system, and it needs to be in each of the room. The HVAC is set up for the whole room, so you have to redo the HVAC. 
So the majority of it is for those costs. Yeah, it makes sense. But at the same time, then they hop in the truck and they're all together. But, but they're not changing in the right, truck, right, hopefully. Right, right, right. That side of it makes sense to have privacy, but. Uh, Rebecca, it, it, I mean, uh, if we can talk about it, I mean, uh, can I address some of the uh, issue about the uh, fire stations? The, uh, the well, one, Sure, I mean, I think we've talked about well, that's needing what we're to here replace, for, you know? replace them. Yeah, so, so what I'm thinking, in, instead of uh, improve, like say, the present fire station, uh, and building the third one, the way I look based on the proximities uh, in West Dallas, 12 square miles, I don't think really we need three stations. So if, if, if the issue is about the genters, I, I think we can build a new station, but I only have a two fire station in West Dallas. That would be in a long term, would be a big savings cost, instead of continue to have a three fire stations. You know, you know yourself uh, how many, I mean, uh, fires that happens, you know, but the percentage is very low in West Dallas, you know. Kitchen fires happens, some of the fires did occur, you know, but the percentage is very low. But the ambulance service is very high, you know. So, uh, so to me, I mean, I feel if, if we're gonna make some changes in the building, well, we better maybe think about it the future of the city, you know, not just today, you know, to invest uh, more wisely. Why have a three stations? I mean, I never, in, 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 in my talk. <laughs> it's such a setup. I, yeah, it's I know, see, timing. that's what I've said. We got more service. Talk about or, <laughs> but, but that would be really the something to bring it out, you know, to discuss further, you know. Because well, if think... we go and invest over $200,000 to update, uh, because of the changing of genders, you know, with, within our fire department, was something to kind of look into it, really. You know, based on the proximity, I think within two minutes, three minutes, you can be anywhere within the uh, city of West Dallas, you know, really. There's also discussion about having, building one with a new public works facility, too. Yeah, the chief brought that up. Yeah. So, I, so. I think, to reduce stations, we'd probably have to have like a, a study or something. <coughs> yes, yes, totally, I understand that. Because <laughs> we'd need some um, data to to uh, use, because I'm not sure that most of the citizens would you know, appreciate fewer stations, but if we have the data to support it. Oh, of course. And I know if you were to remove one, my homeowner's insurance would go up into no longer live in one mile of the station, so they're discounted. Yeah. I think they're bringing every truck out yeah, now. Pretty much. It's a commercial so fire on Curtis now. Road. Yeah. 221 Curtis, yeah. 212. A house fire? Commercial. Commercial, yeah. And lastly is the fire station generator. We put that in the generator that's currently in station two. This is the, in the early 1970s. library uh, elevator uh, just for maintenance and at the worst case scenario a replacement of an elevator uh, so it'll be approximately a hundred thousand for that replacement so and Dave with that elevator I've asked um, Mike Kazalka to see if the uh, endowment funding is a possible source for that I know we use the endowment funding for was that the facade improvements? Is that yeah. right? right uh -huh. So that's to <clears throat> be determined. Okay. The general, um, we need to start looking forward to um, replacing our current financial software, our timekeeping software. Our, we don't really have adequate HR database for our city of our size. We have a lot of homegrown things that we utilize um, and then we have separate benefit enrollment software and a lot of the um, 
different so software solutions that cities use would encompass a lot of these. So um, we're looking at starting to to do that for efficiency and um, Jason can probably speak more to the financial component of that. I mean, the finance part of the software. Yeah, so I mean, we, we've looked at a, a couple of softwares so far that the other surrounding communities have been using and the capabilities that they have are just far beyond what we have. So right now it's not easy to get data out and get answers out of the system. It's significantly easier with uh, built-in dashboards um, that just drill down to all the details that you need. Uh, you guys would be amazed at how much nicer it is now a system built you know, a decade or two later. Uh, the system that we have, they do do very minor improvements to it at this point but I see it as a legacy program that at some point they're just going to stop servicing it altogether. And we're, we are, that we're not on the cloud for that, are we, or are we? The current one is in the cloud. Okay. So this was kind of a guess, too, for the amount, but it's something we need, we need to do sooner rather than later. And then the IT <coughs> firewall replacement and the remote support tools. Those are needed, obviously, for cyber security. And for water, uh, the pumping station, uh, for all these years we've knocked on wood, haven't had a generator at that site. So we're looking at. Number one, downsizing the pumping station, but also having emergency generator placed there for the pumping capacity, fire protection. Uh, and then equipment requests for backhoe. Uh, then we have fire hydrant equipment requests as well as water meters for residential replacements that we're required to do per the PSC. You guys the, got that. Yeah. yeah, the other two led service line, that's our annual program to just uh, to continue to get all the lead water services out. Fortunately, we still only have about 30% participation okay. when we do offer it, but hoping to get more. And then water main relays, um, looking to do some water main only work uh, between 97th and 99th north of Lincoln. There's a lot of breaks. Um, in those streets I work with water department to pick out those areas. Sanitary, the PPI that relates with the water service, so we partner, if someone signs up for that, they can get their sanitary sewer replaced, um, and the MMSD helps fund all that. The relays, that's scattered throughout the city. Uh, just after reviewing all the televising of our sewers, we go and then fix what's needed all throughout, whether it's trenchless work or excavation. Storm, the outlet, that's uh, near 57th and Rita, just south there in the Milwaukee County Park. Um, it's the outlet that's been deteriorating for the last couple of years. If you go there now, it's uh, kind of fenced off and you'll see the, the pipes all over the place. So we've been wanting to fix that for a while, but uh, I think AECOM, our consultant, finally has a solution, or a proposed solution that we recently submitted to the county for approval. Uh, we're looking to potentially put a pond there to collect the water, treat it, and then discharge it into the KK, and we'll get outside funding for that. Storm sewer relays, uh, that's um, just general relays throughout, kind of related back to the televising program. And then the vacuum truck is a replacement of the existing vehicle. For the storm sewer management it has a vacuum capacity as well as a jet mechanism to clean out the um, pipes uh, then a garbage truck which will be used for recycling collection so we're looking at the solid waste for funding there you know that outlet which one you're talking about is being like that probably as old as you are yeah really I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. 
they got that orange fencing around, you know, you got all them weeds and trees growing, you know. I mean, really, the county should really thought about to do something a long time ago, really. Yeah, and my backstory on it is I know it, it's our storm sewer in their park, so it's a caveat. Of well, of course, yeah, that, sure, because we feed into the Kinnikinnik River there, you know. Yeah. That's why I know I've been near, I lived there for a long time, so I know. <laughs> it's older than you. <laughs> as far as the funding for that, do I have this correct? It was 100% covered by MMSD, is that right? I believe so, but I can confirm with that because I don't know if our stormwater is going to pick up. Let me, I don't want to speak incorrectly. I, okay. All right. If that's okay. Or, yep, that's fine. Okay. We got to finalize some of these other um, funding details. I just wanted to ask the question. That's what I have. Can I go back to the lead service line? Is that still the. Um, like streets we're already working on where it's only for those residents it's offered yeah. correct eventually that'll have to change with the new lead and copper rule and we'll be hiring a consultant to kind of help us guide us through that whole process because it'll be a huge undertaking to bunch of new rules to get all the lead out so if i can get half my block in can i get my block out? <laughs> <laughs> well we have fun yeah Neighbors on both sides are in. <laughs> so that's the list of all the projects. And the, the next couple of pages, Jason's done a good job of breaking them down into the different funding details. I don't know. We have, I don't know what your intention was. We have two more meetings scheduled, but you've done a lot of the work. So what I was hoping to do today is make sure that everyone understands the projects that were proposed uh, and that we would take the opportunity to fine-tune this and bring a final proposal at the second meeting if that sounds good you know like I just asked if you could verify the MMSD funding um, and I know we had some further discussion on the, on the <coughs> dorms is there anything else you know that we want to discuss and tweak I, d I wasn't intending on today being a Hey, here's the budget. Let's a, let's a, you know move it forward, kind of thing. Well, but for some of these, I feel like we need, like we have a question for the police chief. Be nice to also have like the fire chief here to answer some of his questions. So maybe he has a long-term vision for what we're doing with the station. So I feel like maybe we need to hold off on that until the next meeting. But could we talk about? the streets while we're here and get that out of the way. Or not. The streets were, that was the first on our list. We kind of went through those. Okay, sorry. Oh, so with the, um, the police department, what questions <coughs> did you have from them? I know the fire department, we for sure need. Well, we, I mean, I think for both departments, one of the questions is like kind of a long-term plan for where, you know, what are we going to do with the substation? Do we need to? So that's, okay. I don't know, somebody mentioned that's also a conversation to have with the chief, so it'd be helpful to have him here. <coughs> um, or we just strike it out and push it down, you know, kick the can down the road and then hopefully we can figure out what we're going to do. So. We can probably definitely invite them to the next one as far as like the dorm things. My suggestion was going to be that we just start with one dorm because I believe station two, no matter what happens, we would be keeping that. Yeah. And then I know we're trying to work to replace station three, three, move it. And then, I mean, since one and two are so close, it's kind of what, you know, so... That was going to be one of my suggestions when we get to the end. I don't think we should build them all because, for sure, Station 3, That I don't think you should put that much money into that building because it's not, <laughs> hopefully it's not long for <laughs> for it's, us it's to be hurt. using it. Yeah. So, but I can have them come to the next 
meeting and I can talk to them about some of the thoughts that we had here so they can be ready to answer any questions about that. Just curious with the dorms, were they wanting like one person per dorm or was it one room for males, one room for females? One person per dorm. Okay. Because they're trying to solve like the illness, exposure, and the gotcha. gender. Because I was just yeah. thinking to Patrick's point, like once they go back in the truck, I wonder if a good compromise is to at least give them one per gender. I don't know. Yeah. Just an idea. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good So I could uh, <laughs> retrofit one of the schools that's possibly going to be closed and turn it into a fire station and they can all have a classroom. I was that thinking that or an office building. Yeah. Longfellow? Which one are you talking about? Longfellow? Yeah. No, I don't no. know. Plain? <laughs> <laughs> no, he wanted to go south. Yeah. So I. I if anyone goes to Lane, we need them to be able to still be a polling location. It's got to be in the <laughs> development agreement. <Yes. coughs> we didn't mention that well, this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't Lane going to be partially the rec department? Possibly. Yeah. Well, that's one idea. Part rec department, part the fire station building. And but keep Lane. the classrooms. Are there any other items that people want more, <coughs> more detail on that we could bring? Patrick, for Excellent. the farmer's market, the power upgrade, is that a funding? 100000 for a consultant, or is that for the upgrade? That's the upgrade. Okay. We have some. So we have somebody that gave a bid already to help with the design, but he has a block grant rules. We have to have two quotes. Mm -hmm. We got to facilitate that, and then we got to just uh, we got to follow our procurement policy on that. So and there's two parts to that. It's like the electrical upgrade, and then have a group meeting to discuss what other things do we want at the farmers markets. So that if we do this upgrade, that we put enough power and not have to come back. So um, I also don't want to develop this whole s snowball of a project here either where we just start talking about enclosing markets and you know we just want to make certain that we do what we need for a little bit of long-range planning but enough to, to make some difference right Patrick is there any funding we have a hundred thousand set aside in 2022 for farmers market lighting upgrades and if that can be put together with the CDBG. lighting and the CDBG and and the new electrical upgrades there and that and then the sewage district offered some money that can do some s stormwater work but some other things can happen when you do that work um, I think it's to the tune of 400,000 I'd have to look okay but it, it was part of the yeah. Effort that they would like to see some stormwater collection there, but some other work can happen with that. That's what I've been told. With through Nadia, yeah, yeah. that sounds yeah. right. Yeah. So we put all those together. That should help advance that. I know one time we just had one follow-up meeting, went through a couple, and then finance put a recommendation together on what gets funded, and made a recommend. I think we voted to approve it right away at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I could see, unless there's a new questions that come up, I could see a final plan up for vote on, on the next meeting. Anything else? Yeah, I know last year we had the luxury of federal funding coming down, so we were able to do that with flexibility. I mean, I see there's some federal funding, but like common those sources if they're more certain to see. If you know there's federal funding. 
funding for certain things. Yeah. yeah. Then that's not a ton. So we did get our, our, our big ARPA so allotment. We got a pretty easy so there's, uh, if, you, if you look at the funding detail yeah, page um, in okay. here, okay. you'll see the DPW facility is yeah. earmarked for a significant portion, and then a lot of what you see with the roads here mm -hmm. is um, water and sewer. Uh, water and sanitary related uh, because those were specifically stated as eligible uses in the same side of the dorms. And then engineering is going to continue to pursue with the DOT, you know, whatever we can uh, because those funds will be available, I think, for the next couple of years. Yeah, I think through 2026, those bill funds go through. It's a little bit longer than the school district. 2023, everything has to be used up. I'm just looking at Tracy and realizing in about five minutes she's going to have the sun blaring in her eyes because it's like <laughs> right, up to, right up to here on your nose. So. I'll sit up taller. <laughs> I'll try to sit up a little taller. Right. I remember that last year, realizing how we're going to get I think that's why we wanted to be in room 128, but we have this yeah. election going on. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Next time we. Motion? So if there's nothing else, then I think it's safe to adjourn, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs>